Hey guys, today we have a, another video, another tea to spill. So we have Gabby Hanna. She hasn't posted on YouTube, but I feel like that's more of a statement than actually posting. So I have a few things to go over, just a few like kind of backlog situations. So in my description, you'll have my social media, my beauty channel, anything else you may need to find. And you can like, comment, subscribe, hit that bell if you want to see more of me on your screens. Also, if you were subscribed, make sure you scroll down and check if you're still subscribed because YouTube tends to unsubscribe people. So just do all of that. So today's video is very kindly sponsored by Function of Beauty and if you want 20% off your new favorite hair care you can click the link in the description and you'll get 20% off. So this time I decided to switch things up for you guys. I've been using uh, the shampoo and conditioners that I've had but I would always get the hair oil and this time I decided to get a hair mask which game changer love it. Um, I love using hair masks because my hair is so long. I bleach it. I use heat on it. I just feel like every now and then adding that extra bit of you know moisture and hydration to your hair is just perfect so uh like always my profile is straight hair medium uh with normal oiliness levels on the scalp my goals are deep condition hydrate shine strengthen and volumize um i do like a little bit of volume mainly because my hair's growing back now so I, I think hydration is working because my hair's not crumbling off at the ends which means that i'm actually getting length um and the fragrance i got is their brand new fragrance and it's incredible it's called takes two to mango and i got it in strong i like strong scents i like to make sure that the, the scent lingers in between washes and the scent is mango grapefruit and mandarin oh my god is it incredible uh this and the perfection one it's pear and apple i think my two favorites so i got the new one of the new colors so this is a new color you can get it in both shampoo and conditioner it's like this red and if you get it in the shampoo version it'll be a little bit deeper than this uh, but it's just this beautiful like ready pink um and then i got the orange to go with like the grapefruit mandarin situation i think that's really cute actually just my opinion so i've been using functional beauty hair products since last kind of like end of summertime and i feel like i've gotten like a good grasp on, on how it works my hair has never been softer it feels incredible it looks super shiny and healthy and i have no split ends which is just great because uh I can use heat, I can still bleach my hair and do the whole thing to maintain the blonde, but my hair doesn't crumble off at the end, which means that technically my hair is growing quicker because it's not falling off at the end. I feel like with other hair care products, you'll either get volume or get, get hydration or you'll get, you know, something, but you never really get everything. Whereas with Functional Beauty, I feel like you get everything that you need tailored right for you. So I got, you know, hydration and deep conditioning, but I also asked for volume and I feel like I get all of that and I feel like I don't have to like sacrifice anything for other traits of shampoos so actually they even though they are made in the u.s they abide by eu rules which means they banned a thousand and four hundred ingredients compared to the fda's 11 products 11 ingredients versus 1400 that could potentially be harmful to you i love that for them they're dermatologist tested which means they don't irritate your scalp and i've noticed a huge difference with that as well i feel like i used to have a really irritated scalp where it would get like just painful sometimes if i use the wrong shampoo and conditioner and i feel like with these i haven't had that issue at all my scalp feels great in case you wanted to know the products are tested but on voluntary people they're never tested on animals um and they're tested thoroughly to make sure that each ingredient works well for you each ingredient also undergoes extreme strict scrutiny to make sure that it's safe for you to use they use clean ingredients no parabens no gmos no toxins it's 100 percent vegan and cruelty free like i said so you can get 20 percent off your new favorite hair care if you click the link in the description it'll be the first link of my description uh for 20 percent off so let's get back into the tea so gabby hannah she has been posting on her patreon but she hasn't posted on youtube now let's backtrack a little bit let's go back so gabby hannah has been posting her series she's on she's done a few episodes now allegedly allegedly there were supposed to be 12 to 13 episodes a few of them on jesse smile some on t channels some on her own past controversies with racially charged comments etc even the rice gum situation you know with the phone smashing and stuff so she did episodes on trisha paytas escape the night which has got joey graceffa and daniel Prada. And at that point, I hadn't covered that story because I was dealing with my own drama of Gabby Hanna. So I didn't get to cover the Joey and Daniel stuff, even though I literally had like an A4 size sheet of notes. So I'll go over that very quickly today. She covered Jesse Smiles, Tea Channels, Rice Gum, Her Own Past. So those are the parts that she did. Now, with the Trisha Paytas stuff, some people are more on Gabby's side than Trisha's side, but I feel like that's almost not because Gabby Hanna made good points but also because Trisha Paytas was already going through a different scandal on her own. I feel like maybe if Trisha Paytas was at her height and peak of frenemies, no one would be like on Gabby's side, but I feel like Gabby monetized, almost coined in on the fact that Trisha Paytas was highly disliked at this point. And that's when she like decided to post the, the episode. I don't know. I feel like, yes, 
Trisha and Gabby are both in the wrong and I will not pick the lesser of two evils. Like that's just my opinion on that. We then had an episode on Rice Gun, which I definitely like agree that, you know, what he did was wrong and people's reactions were wrong, but I never defended Rice Gun, so that's not even, you know, for me to decide on. We also had the BuzzFeed article in between all of this, which was like the worst piece of journalism I've ever read. It was basically just like a bit of a fan fiction about Gabby Hanna. It was weird, it was strange. It was basically just like going over how Gabby would mention like everyone that ever wronged her in that article and then like they never ever went and fact checked it somewhere else. So they just wrote this article, this one-sided biased article without ever fact checking the other side. I don't know. Then we had a Joey and Daniel episode. Now I never covered this one and I had, like I said, extensive research so i'm not gonna go over like in that much detail what happened but essentially she posted a video saying how escape the night was like the worst thing she's ever done she did season two and then she did season four so she said that they begged her to come back for season four how there was no good food for her which triggered her eating disorder she had she said how she had a costume that was like tight and uncomfortable she had jewelry that heavily broke her out in like hives she was tied up in one of the scenes and she had like rope burns on her hands uh like it was like actual rope what was it that they were really unorganized and they would like keep on having to call her back and you know it was unorganized so she posted all of this basically trashing on escape the night because allegedly daniel and joey both shaded her in the past about escape the night so i spoke about this before so daniel prada posted a question and answer on Instagram that, well, he asked for questions on Instagram and then he posted answers on his YouTube channel. And one of them was who was like the worst person to work with on Escape the Night. And he said, Gabby Hanna. Everyone complained about her. She was very mean to everyone. And he said she was just a really difficult person to work with, okay? But he also said that she did put on a good show when it came to actually filming and that, you know, at least the final product came out good. But filming with her was not an enjoyable experience for either of them sounds fine to me sounds like a fair enough statement to me he was one of the producers so he like kind of worked behind the scenes to produce and make sure everything runs smoothly so he was responsible for everything behind the scenes which means he's probably got one of the best judges of he's one of the best judges of what happened behind the scenes then joe graceffa was on trisha paytas's podcast back in the day and she said was there a person that was difficult to work with and he said yes there was a person that we had for season two and then season four and they were an awful person to work with in season four but at least they bought the drama they bought the you know bedazz to the final product but they were awful to work with and i would never invite them back now daniel mentioned that it was gabby but joey didn't now she everyone had assumed that those two are about the same person and they all seemed it was about gabby now if people hear an anonymous story about a person being really mean awful rude and they assume that it's you you might be the problem without ever like any hints of who we're talking about we're talking about a person behaving badly and everyone assumes it's you that speaks volumes on who you are as a person. I'm sorry, it just does. So anyway, apparently she got like a lot of hate for this, okay? And she films this video basically trashing on Escape the Night, saying how they're ruining her career, they're lying about her because they just want to destroy any future projects for her, okay? So Joe Graceffa posts a video and he says, this is the tea, like this is what actually happened. He posted emails, he posted text messages. He said, many women who worked on that show say they were disrespected by Gabby, felt awful. A girl came up to him, a YouTuber, and said, could I be killed off first because I do not want to work with Gabby. It's an awkward, uncomfortable, and just awful situation to be in and I want to be killed off first. And he said, no, we're gonna kill Gabby off first because like she's impacting everyone else's work. Why should other people be killed off? Because she can't behave herself. When it came to fitting for the costume, she loved the costume, but she didn't come to two out of the three fittings for the costume. So yeah, it didn't fit well because she didn't show up. And when, when a employee went to her studio to get her fitted, she didn't show up. This was a nine month pregnant person. Drove over there, she didn't have to do, to make sure that it was fitted and she didn't show up. Gabby just like blew her off. Anyway, so all of that happened with dietary stuff. He said she didn't fill in the dietary form and he has actual vlog proof of her not filling in the dietary form, okay? So first day on the set, he comes up to her and he's like, oh look, Gabby's learning her lines. And she goes, no, I'm actually filling in my dietary form. I know it's late, I hope that's fine. And he was like, no, these forms were sent like a week before so we could do the shopping necessary. And then they show the trailer that they got for everyone, which actually Joey and Daniel paid out of pocket for because uh, they didn't have the budget for that in the show. So they wanted nice trailers for their friends. The trailers were incredible that like, you could live there. Like it was incredible. Like full size beds, full size bathrooms, a living area, like, oh my God. And then they showed the mini fridge, right? So they had healthy foods, they had fruit, they had protein shakes, they had, they said like, if you ask for anything, they would give you that. Like for example, Colleen Ballinger, she just wanted Coke. 
she was like, just give me, I think it was like Diet Coke or Coke or something. She was like, and that's all, she just had cans of Coke in her fridge, nothing else. But for everyone else, if you didn't specify, they'd just give you a bit of everything. Fanta, Coke, Sprite, protein shakes, aloe water, like cocoa water, like everything. So they were just like, you had everything. Like they had vegetables, fruits, snacks, crisps, healthy snacks, unhealthy snacks, like anything you could have asked for. Even in the makeup rooms, they had snacks everywhere to eat and they showed proof with Tana Mojo eating in the background and just like while getting her makeup done, she's like snacking on crisps and stuff. There was enough food and if she had just filled in the form, she would have had the food that she needed, but she didn't fill out the form. And that's where the issue started. So all of that happened. Daniel then posts his video, which is an hour and a bit. And it's just like proof on proof on proof emails why they killed her off the show early because they killed her off early it was supposed to be just tana mojo getting killed off because she was going to an awards show but they had to kill gabby and tana in the same episode because gabby was being a mess and everyone else hated working with her apparently tana was really professional which like blew my mind she was very professional season four he said season two she was still very young new to hollywood but season four she was incredible she was on time she was present she was giving it her all whereas gabby was just not doing that. So yeah, all of this happened, they all post proof. And that's when I feel like the whole series just started going downhill for Gabby because it wasn't just Joey and Daniel saying all of this. It was everyone that worked on the show and all kind of like present people were also backing up those statements. So for example, Rosanna Pensino, there was Tana Mojo, Colleen Ballinger, like a few people that were on the show well, most people that were on the show had liked their statements or commented on their statements or somehow defended their statements. Royal Beauty Christie, just like a bunch of people, obviously Royal Beauty Christie wasn't on the show, but she like defended them publicly saying that they were never like mean to her or anything like that. We also get a tidbit of Rosanna Pensino posted a statement saying how one of the things that she noticed was she shared a wall in between her trailer and Gabby's trailer. So she heard a lot of the stuff that she was saying to Daniel. She said it was awful stuff, but two, they were all getting their makeup done. A kind of like assistant comes in and says, hey, Gabby, we'll have to push your time by 10 minutes. They're not ready for you. She walks off and Gabby Hanna calls her the C word. The C word, I'm not gonna say it because I don't have to censor it out anyway. So the C word, she calls her the C word. She calls her, you stupid, you know, C word. And yeah, so she's like awful stuff. Like she was just awful to work with, with everyone. Like it was, whether you were more famous than her, less famous than her, like it didn't matter. She was just awful to everyone equally. And yeah, so that was that, that I didn't mention last time. So I didn't have time to film the whole video on it. So then we have the Jesse Smiles part. And I already covered all of that in a different video. I covered the Jesse Smiles situation. I'll link that one in the description. So I don't have to go over all of it again, but Gabby posts a Jesse Smiles part. And she says that she's filming this one only because Jesse released the phone call, the three hour phone call. So Gabby's releasing this video in response to that phone call, but then there's more parts about Jessie Smiles that she had pre-filmed along with the whole series. This is like an extra tidbit. She's basically saying I have two other parts about Jessie Smiles. So Jessie then posts her video with complete and utter proof and rebuttal to what Gabby Hanna is saying. Once and for all, Jessie's saying like, I've had enough, okay? And since then, I feel like, so since I'd say the Joey and Daniel episode, Gabby Hanna has lost about 100,000 subscribers, which, in the grand scheme of having like 5.4 million isn't a lot, but she's been losing consistently for a while now, for years. So losing 100,000 now in a matter of a week is yikes. And since the Jessie Smiles part, she has not posted a video, okay? She's not posted another part of the series. She hasn't really posted publicly, except for recently, she started posting on TikTok and Instagram stories again. So she's been posting on Patreon though, which is like obviously the paid subscription. Uh, so she posted things like, Hi, I just want to say thank you and I love you whether you've been around a while or you're, or you're new here. I've been staying silent about my abuse since 2015 and speaking on it the first time I felt truly free. I've been living in fear for so long, always worried about the next move. Now I don't have to ever wander or guess. I've said everything I can. I spoke the truth. I have no skeletons left in my closet. I'm going to take a nap on my watermelon and raft. Have a cute day. And that was July 1st, okay? Then she posts, I think I've been sleeping, but I'm always tired. My body is shrinking, but I feel heavy. I have a million things I'd like to say, but I can't seem to find the words. So, and then there's just like a whole like thing about her being tired of everything. I'm not going to read the whole thing. So then she posts a live stream, right? For her patrons her patreons that was then reposted on youtube and basically in that she confirms that she's not continuing with her series so what i found out recently was that this series was supposed to happen and then that she was going to leave youtube right and even jesse smile said that in her video this was supposed to be like her completely getting rid of all the accusations on her and then leaving youtube on that but what jesse smile said was very true like everyone that's been affected by this series said what you're trying to do is take everyone down and then leave YouTube instead of just leaving YouTube. Like, why do you need to take the everyone down with you? So she was supposed to do the series and then leave. And it feels like 
because she's not continuing the series, I feel like she's not going to continue YouTube, right? So it just seems like she's going to be doing Patreon and OnlyFans now, and that's kind of going to be her source of income, but I, I'm not sure. She could just cut the series short and then go back to posting YouTube videos and music. I don't know. Or maybe she'll just be focusing on music and Patreon, or, well, she said she's going to be doing OnlyFans, not Patreon now. So yeah, it just seems like she's not continuing the live stream. Now, on top of this, right, kind of related but unrelated, it's kind of to do with my little conspiracy theory. Death Noodles is a fellow drama content creator and he's got a YouTube channel, but he's also got a very big Twitter account where he posted daily, like multiple stories a day, just tea, like little tea bits. And his whole account got suspended. And on his Dennis kind of like personal account he posted, so Death Noodles just got suspended. It's unclear why it got suspended. I didn't have any posts removed, no copyright vi violations, no copyright violations, no warnings. I've been getting a lot of emails from Twitter though telling me people have been reporting my account. I'm working on getting it back. One of the emails said that it was required by German law to provide notice to users who are reported by people from Germany. And apparently it was to do with a German law regarding kind of like fake news. So he got suspended for fake news, essentially, by German law. And I remember Keemstar, even though he hates Death Noodles, he actually tried to help him out and he DM'd with Twitter and Twitter said it was a permanent suspension. And Insider also got the information and said that it was a permanent suspension, he's not coming back. So he's been permanently out, like, you know, cut. And now people are saying it's either, you know, the fake news, like they said, for the German law, it could have been because he recently reported on Addison Rae and he posted this video that apparently Addison Rae's team tried to like scrub the internet clean off. It was her being really entitled when she was on like 500k followers. Uh, so he posted that and apparently that got taken down. Then it could be the James Charles fans. Obviously he posted a lot of allegations against James Charles and then James Charles indirectly mentioned Death Noodles in his new video, An Open Conversation. And it may be that his James Charles's fans mass reported him and because the accusations didn't have, some of them didn't have that much proof, maybe, Obviously they had to take down his whole account. Or it could be Gabby Hanna fans. Now people are saying Gabby Hanna because he's been posting her Patreon content. And if you post Patreon content outside, that could be like rules to, to, to report his content. Which is why I don't read her whole Patreon stuff because I'm just like, look, I don't want to risk it. So it kind of relates, like it could be to do with Gabby Hanna, could not be. But yeah, that's kind of where we're at with Gabby Hanna right now. Those are all the updates. If you guys enjoyed the video, give a thumbs up, comment down below, anything and comment down below, and subscribe for this videos every time I think of something to do. So hit that bell button when that's happening. Click the link in the description for 20% off Function of Beauty, and I'll see you in my next one. Bye guys.